Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. We're going to take a look at some surprising numbers for the second week of January and kind of work through it and see what we're seeing and what kind of spring we're going to have. Uh, a lot of moving parts. So let's just start by saying that we still don't have the listings out there that we normally do. Um, we're sitting at... Uh, um, 16,000. Um, that's considerably higher than last year. Last year we were at 5,800. So our listings are way up percentage wise, uh, but they actually have been going down in January when we were all expecting them to go up. Now, when I looked at the Cromford Market Index and I saw that it was starting to move up in December, I viewed it as just kind of a anomaly and a temporary move but that's not the case because the reason I felt that way was because, well, we're obviously going to have more listings in the first of the year. Well, because we haven't and because sales have increased, the Cromford Market Index is showing some positive numbers. And that's what it's all about. So the contract ratios, this is a little hard to see here, but I'll, um, in November we were sitting at 32.3 and January here we're at 37.2. It's going up. It's not anywhere nuts like it was back here, and I'm glad it's not nuts anymore. But here's the list pricing, and I want to point something out here. We're that dot here on the side, so I'm going to draw a line right across here, and we are at slightly close to November or December pricing of last year. That's where people are listing them, but what are they selling at? Well, if you take that same line and you extrapolate it out this way, they're getting pricing from September, October, and November of last year. So they're asking higher than November of last year, but they're only getting November. And that's a, that's a big deal. So that means that 90, the contract ratio now, I think, is, um, it's let's see, take a look here. I think it's 96%. So you're getting 4% less than your asking price on average. And that's uh, to be expected because right now in this market, nobody's going to offer you your asking price. I don't care how sweet your price is. Uh, we're just not seeing it. We're seeing it in such a so small segment of the market. But what we are seeing is a huge increase in percent of closings with seller paid concessions. Look at this up 40 it's 49.9 percent and it says the median concession is nine thousand four hundred and fifty dollars that's a lot of money so when you look at the list price and then you look at the closed price it doesn't include how much they're actually giving you so they may have listed the home for four hundred fifty thousand and it sold for four hundred and forty thousand but then they may have also kicked in another ten grand in closing cost assistance Unfortunately, when we record closed sales, it doesn't show you all of that. There's a lot of contribution from sellers to help you buy down your rate and to help with your closing costs. Now, interest rates have been improving uh, even this week. Uh, they're kind of bouncing around a little bit today, um, and they're they're kind of expected to do that. So we're we're rolling about 6.11 um, on a national average, and it's looking like rates are just going to up, down, down a little up. If there's any negative news that comes out, the rates will be affected. Uh, hard to tell what that's going to be. There's so many outside influences from interest rates. But now, right now, bond traders are hedging that inflation is improving. And when inflation improves, interest rates improve. And inflation's improving, but we still have a long way to go. So yes, the Fed's going to kick in a couple more rate hikes. We don't know how aggressive or how long, quite frankly, they don't know how aggressive or how long, but the market's always been right more times than the central bank has been right. Right now, they're saying, looks like you're getting control of inflation, so we're betting that uh, um, we're buying more bonds so they can get a decent return on their bonds now. So that's what's happening in the market in Phoenix. Now, the other thing is there's a lot of speculation about what's going to happen with these short-term rentals, these Airbnbs. People go, wait till after Super Bowl, everybody's going to dump them. And my response is, well, yeah, but you still got spring training. So I don't think you'd want to dump them then because spring training should be good this year if the airlines can get their act together. Um, 
Now, after that, I think we're going to see some sell-offs on Airbnbs, not because everybody's worried about a crash, but in that market, we've reached a point of saturation. It's kind of opposite of what we've got going on in real estate. Right now, we, we have a affordability problem, so it's keeping buyers from getting into the market. In the Airbnbs, people aren't getting, getting the rate that they used to get their houses because too many people jumped into that sandbox, especially in Sedona. There's way too many Airbnbs in Sedona, and people that own them are having a hard time keeping the bookings up. Not because tourism fell or everything's bad. There's just too many. And that's what's going on in Phoenix and Scottsdale. Scottsdale's unbelievable. I think there's something like 3,400 Airbnbs, maybe more. I'd have to look it up. I expect to see more of those hit the market as we get into late spring. It's just a guess. But whenever something is saturated like that, you're going to have people pair back. So that's what I expect to happen with them. And you'll tell because you'll see listings come up to say, fully furnished. That way you know it's an Airbnb. So we'll see what happens. The other unknown, I don't know what Open Door and Offer Pad are going to do. I don't know how long Open Door can hang in there. Um, if they file bankruptcy, what does bankruptcy look like? I mean, if you have a thousand homes on the market and you file bankruptcy and your people that have invested you don't get a return on their investment, uh, what do you do with the inventory? You know, the courts will have to decide that. Well, are they going to say, well, Dump them for pennies on the dollar. I don't think so. Um, and I haven't. we haven't had any experience, any history to look and say, when I buyers go broke, what happens next? So that'll be very interesting to watch. And it'll probably be a topic of business at the Harvard Business School and uh, what not to do when it comes to eye buying. So I'm interested to see where that takes us. Do me a favor, smash that like button. Looks like somebody's texting me.